So the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us, first there was Allah and there was nothing else. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Al-Arsh, then He created the throne. And you know, you have to understand, we're talking about the throne, we're talking about the throne now, being created independent of any angels that carry it, independent of the heavens and the earth, independent of anything that comes under it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the throne. Now everything that we've spoken about in regards to the universe, in regards to the galaxies, in regards to the, the, the trillions of stars and the trillions of planets and so on and so forth, all of that comes under as sama dunya the first heaven. Rasulullah the Prophet he actually tells us that uh, the comparison of this heaven to the next heaven is like a ring in the desert. So everything that we've spoken about that is mashhuda, all of that is just one heaven. Everything, all of that comes under one iron ring in comparison to the heaven that is above it. Then the Prophet said that heaven compared to the one above it is also like a ring in the desert. And that heaven compared to the one above it is also like a ring in a desert until the Prophet ﷺ got to the seventh heaven and he said that heaven in comparison to Al-Kursi, Al-Kursi is the footstool uh, which Sa'id ibn Jubayr said is like a stair to the Arsh, is like a stair to the throne. That all of these heavens compared to the Kursi is like a ring in the desert and the Prophet ﷺ said the Kursi compared to the throne, compared to the Arsh is like a ring in the desert. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as he's telling us about the different degrees and how far the different heavens are from each, uh, the one that comes before it. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, and Allah is above his throne, but nothing is hidden from him. And Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he says that Allah azza wa jal mentions himself many times in the Quran as the Lord of the glorious throne, Rabbul Arsh al-Majid or Rabbul Arsh al azim because it is the first and most magnificent of his creation and all of the creation is under it. And it's amazing because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this beautiful creation and when he tells us about his rising above the throne in Surah Al-Hadid, immediately after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that he, that, that he rose above his throne, he says, يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَحْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا That Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything that goes in and out of the earth, everything that falls from the skies and everything that's produced from the skies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the slightest details of this world. So do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is distant. Rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He's with you wherever you may be. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses throughout the Qur'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you wherever you may be. And, and, and how does Allah Azza wa Jal explain that? Uh, that He is بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ That He sees everything, that He hears everything, right? He tells Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam, إِنِّي مَعْكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى That I'm still with you, I hear and I see everything that goes on. My knowledge encompasses everything. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَمِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءَ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمُ الْأَرْضِ Are you, Do you feel a sense of security? Are you really certain that the one above will not sink you from the earth, from, from beneath you? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully in control. And Imam Malik rahimahullah, he really gives us our creed. He gives us a methodology to understand theology and to understand our creed. When he was asked by a man, and this is a very famous statement, he was asked by a man, how did Allah rise above his throne? How do we understand this as believers? How did Allah rise above his throne? And Imam Malik rahimahullah, he started to sweat, he started to shake. You know, he was really afraid of answering that question. But he gave one of the most beautiful answers and perhaps it was because of his taqwa, it was because of his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and possibly saying something wrong about Allah that Allah azza wa jal inspired Imam Malik to give a statement that would become a headliner, that would become a motto for the people of Sunnah, the people who believe in the Prophet sallallahu and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and do not assign human dimensions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Malik rahimahullah, he said that al-istiwa ma'lum, meaning Allah is, you know, or, or the rising al-istiwa in the Arabic language is known. We know what it means to rise. He says, but al-kayf, how, is ghayru ma'qul, is beyond our comprehension. We have no idea what it, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises above His throne. We don't assign any human dimensions. We realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of our dimensions. He says, وَالْإِيمَانُ bihi wajib." But to believe in it is mandatory and to ask about it is bid'ah. To ask about it is innovation. 
So we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. We don't, we don't try to assign our dimensions to it. We don't imagine things. We don't try to comprehend it. We simply believe in it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us. So the Prophet sallallahu what did he tell us? He said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed his creation, he wrote with himself upon the throne, inna rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. That verily my mercy overtakes and supersedes my anger. That is what is prescribed on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His mercy is greater than his anger.